My beloved daughter, Gabriella, by the time you read this, I'm afraid I will no long, longer be with you. I have instructed Salazar to give you this letter when the time is right. Perhaps you read this three years from now, ten years from now, or maybe never will. But that's alright. Writing this letter is something of a selfless excuse in truth. More than anything in the world, I loathe hypocrisy. Paying up one's own goodness despite having accomplished nothing of value. That is the very height of self-indulgence. In that sense, my good deeds to date has been purely practical. I believe in doing the good deeds you wish to do, regardless of whether others understand your reason or what they may whisper when your back is turned. Some good deeds cannot be accomplished with clean hands, and I have never been one to hesitate to roll up my sleeves. But I'm afraid my bad deeds have caught up to me. I cannot long continue as long as I am. My enemies are now so numerous I can longer keep track and it would come to so great shock where I will be assassinated sooner or later. Even if the police are constantly looking for an excuse to throw me in the jail. Of course, I'm delighted to see them so eager for justice. Even if I am the one who ensured these countries would drive them to do so at my own expense. And above all, I'm concerned that the dirtier my hands get, the harder it has become to hear my consciousness. I have never told anyone about this before, but in truth, I am much more innocent man than I pretend. That is why I'm going to end my own life before I become a genuine monster. Sazar will be able to handle the rest, and if any further problems should arise, the Closers should take care of them. Closers? I never heard that name before. Now, here's the important part. A few days after my funeral, evidence of wrongdoing committed by a certain high-ranking government official should be delivered around the country. Far too many for them to cover it all up. No doubt, these revelations will create something of a crisis, but things should settle down soon enough. Until they do, I would like you to lay low in Mehesawa. Finally, I need to tell you about my legacy. Given that I used it primarily to level the forthcoming charges of my opponents, most of it will cease to be useful for blackmail after I'm gone. However, some of it will still remain its usefulness. As such, I hope you will think of something you would like to use my legacy for yourself. In the meantime, I invited a number of good people to stay by your side. If you happen to find love with one of them, wonderful. If you find friendship with them, that will be wonderful too. Whatever happens, I am filled with hope and love for you and your future. Damn, that's some letter. Your loving father, Miguel Angeles Cortez. Now I see, so you two were the closers. Now that I've been presented with an uncomfortable evidence, it seems I have no choice but to come clean. Indeed, our job was not to uncover the truth, but to see that the trouble was handled quickly and quietly. We do still need to figure out a good way to explain Vargas and Salazar's death. But since Gabriel is survived, that should be too hard. Perhaps we call this case a Mendelus Mouse Foul Name Drop. That's much easier than the job we were hired for. Adrenia, what did they say about silence being golden? God, can you believe these idiots? A couple of them even died for no damn good reason. But that doesn't even mean you have to be party to their idiocy, Gabriella. So come on, wake up already, please! And so she awakens. 
Gabriel ya? Huh? Um, this might be a lot of take in after just waking up, but the truth is, it's all right. I heard everything. Damn. Thank you for worrying about me, Lizzie. Uh, uh, she remembered my name? Uh, you couldn't have just called me that from the start and saved us the boat a lot of time. <laughs> As usual, you're far cry from being a proper lay, Elise. But right now, I'm glad that you your foul mouth of yours. Well, you're free to do whatever you like now, Gabriel. Have you decided what you're going to be doing now that the world is your oyster? I'm sad to hear that Vargas and Salazar had a fatal misunderstanding. But I look forward to getting to know all of you better, as the friends my father so kindly chose. That sounds like a great plan to me! I think Danzo would be happy to hear that too. I'm sorry to be the downer, but have you ever forgotten what the letter said? The scandal time bomb President Cortez planted is bound to go up soon. There is every possibility that some disgruntled dissident could try to attack the Meso when all of this goes public. So I think I'll stay here a little longer to make sure Gabriel remains safe from any potential hooligans. It's also part of the job Miguel entrusted to us. Well, guess my hands are tied then. Vargas always hated being left alone, so I better stay here a little longer. Uh, I'm staying too, because my friend's here. There is no telling who might come after someone as famous as me if I just grumble around without a care in the world, right uncle? I quite agree. I was just thinking I could use a change of environment for writing my next song. Then I think I'll stick around a little longer too. Aren't you married? Should you just get back home soon? Ah, uh, my wife is much stronger than I am. She'll be fine on her own for a while. I thought I was all alone. I see now that all these people really do care about me. Aww. What's more, I finally realized that he always had my best interests in mind. Thank you, father. Aww, damn. I was worried what might happen to this country after all those government officials were arrested for corruption. But luckily, it ended up just clearing the air. Thanks to that, it's a lot easier to do business now. Now I guess he didn't die but set up our own bartender business. My family used to have to pay through the nose just to keep those guys off our backs. I'm glad they are in prison now. Things look pretty daisy. Things looked pretty dicey back when the royal family was disposed to, but now Nia is made of top stuff. Whoa, you're really good, pal. Play us a song, will ya? Forget it. Confidence in a diving like this doesn't mean jack shit. What was that? Easy, man. Calm down. What are you talking about, pal? There's a salon in a huge mansion called the Mesua, somewhere in the country that is run by a beautiful proprietress. They say if you can prove yourself there, they'll invest in your career. And if you do really good, Jamin might give you one of his songs. So it's my dream to become a good enough musician to be invited to the Mesua someday. Ah. Just forget about it, there's no way that place really exists. You better off working on a real job like us. Bartender, another round, please! Well now, that sounds fascinating. If only more people agreed with you, bartender. 
Tell me about it. And next round's on me. Oh, you got a deal, pal. Alright, so the Mersua home to a beautiful proprietor, a singer, and... And so he survives that conflict. God damn it, Bordiardi. D and Alright, I believe that wraps up, and just with a few minutes to go before the singularity disappears. Tell me, Doctor, what did you think of the Mersua most foul? Are you satisfied with the final cut? Absolutely! That was the best thing I ever watched in a good while! There might be a few plot holes here and there, but otherwise, I never have believed you guys improvised the whole thing. Thanks for the great movie, General Cortez. All that's left now is to end this call. Then our deal will be over. And... Venice D45 can take over to finish the job. Oh, what about Mash and Murasaki? Do you need to see if they're satisfied with the results as well? And don't you need to see if the rest of the cast are happy with their performances? I believe that was part of the reward you have in mind. No. <laughs> you need to ask them about that. It was perfectly clear from even this side of the camera. That said, there is only one thing still nagging me. You know what I'm talking about, right, General Cortez? I do know the other servants, but I don't think I know anything at all about you. I can't help but think that's a little odd. Mm. I can't help but think that's a little odd, and even unfair. Unfair? Don't be ridiculous. After all... I know nothing about you either. We don't even know each other's names. But so what? This little conundrum might be quite inconsequential, but it's also quite wonderful. Besides, where other than the world of cinema can chances encounter like this occur? For a brief hour or two, characters that would usually never share the same space got to play off another. Movies are nothing if not entertaining, so if they are the perfect place for these sort of fantastical crossovers. Yeah. That is very romantic way to think about it. And so... It ends. So we finished the event Mesodo Most Foul, even though I have to re-record this on a later date because I didn't do the event quick enough to finish prior to this, so eh, water than bridge I guess. But hey, at least I finally get it done now, so at least I can finally edit this and upload this to my YouTube channel. As for the event itself, I really do like we have a good cast of mem good, uh, good cast of series that portrayed in this event, like Murasaki as the director slash actress. We have Mosh, we have Tristan playing the detective roles, but later on as closers or whatever they're called. We even have Jolter and of course Sarah Larry as the pianist and well Jolter as the singer. Not to mention we have Arash, Ozymandias as the prince and attendant. We have Ryoma. Of oh, course we didn't have Oyu, I wish she made a slight appearance in the movie. We have Arash, Ozymandias, like, I can't even mention those two. Uh, who else am I thinking of? Oh, Izo and Yaku as a small sorrow role in the early parts of the event. Uh, who else am I thinking of? Izo, Arash. Oh, yeah, I forgot Moriarty. And, uh, what was the other guy's name I'm thinking of at the back of my mind? Oh, right, Salazar, aka Bartholomew Robot, which lost his memory, so he couldn't actually remember his true name. 
as besides the characters, I do love the small jab, um, banter between each and one of them in in throughout the event, especially when they're viewing their pitch on how to add this story plotline. And I guess I would say I love the banter with Jolter where she's literally flaming Tristan for not doing jack shit or doing nothing or not doing the right thing in the event and whatnot. It's like, damn, way to roast a man when he's down, why don't ya? <laughs> uh, as after that, well, I do love they actually fixed the ending because they got Murasaki to finally tell her her plotline on how the story should have ended, but hey, at least we added that in somehow, given the fact that uh, Ryomi, Dr. Ryomi gave us more time to actually rework the ending, so at least that kind of helped out, worked out for us in the end. And lastly, though, during the end credits, I wasn't quite sure the conversation between Moriarty and Dr. Roman where they were talking about like how this should have done this and this that. I wasn't certain that either Cortez inhabiting Moriarty's body or Cortez had a physical body of his own. I wasn't really sure on that prospect. So if anyone is watching this and know what the hell is going on at that point in the story, you can probably put it in the comments down below and let me know if I'm overthinking this or I'm just not taking it the right way in that prospect, so... That scene though, I'm, I need to probably need to watch the editing and see what actually was supposedly meant there or something, I don't know. Oh, there was one more thing after all that said and done, or was prior to this during the editing credits where James Moriarty was in the bar. I really didn't expect him to just show up there out of nowhere, but hey, at least I know he's alive now. And with that, I think that should be everything during the bed, but I do want to mention one thing is that I do love the inclusion of Dr. Romy even though he's technically dead now from, you know, what happened in the prior prior main story of Fate Van Orr, but who knows, maybe in future events they might actually portray him a little bit more in events like say giving a hologram or talk about how he was back in the day or something, but who knows, maybe FGO or the light words might actually do that for future events. So here is hoping we might see a little bit more Dr. Ryomi because I do love the guy. So maybe we'll see that in the near future. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this long ass recording session on Freight Grand Order. And if you have any comments, put them down below the video as well. And if you just like this video, please click the like button. It is very much appreciated. If you also curious on what I upload on my YouTube channel, you can give it a look and see whatever content I upload there. If you like those stuff, you know, you can probably subscribe my channel, if not, eh, it's okay. But if you are going to subscribe, don't forget to click the bell icon to get notified whenever I upload slash stream on YouTube. And as per always, I have three projects which are working on my channel, which are right now, Freight Grand Order Events, The Lost Belts, Challenge Squares, Summoning Videos, Guaranteed Summon Videos, or anything that latter related to Freight Grand Order, and secondly, which will be Final Fantasy XIV, with Roll quest, job quest, minions, mounts, and main story quest, I, I guess I, will, I would put that there as well. Savage, well not savage, well, extreme trials if I want to put it that way. And anything related to Final Fantasy XIV. And lastly, which will be Persona 5 The World as per usual, which I keep telling myself we will come back to do at some point, eventually. And with that, this has been Ravensleep45, take care, stay safe. And have a pleasant Freight Grand Order Day.